All right, guys, Engine Buzz coming back here to you today. Um, we got our 1996 F350. Um, it's 460 big block, and we're going to be changing out the distributor. It looks like we have a bad PIP, and that is in here, so we figured we'd just replace the whole thing. So if you want to see the full repair, you can skip ahead a little bit. I'll drop the where that's at in there. Maybe I won't. But a little bit of what I've been dealing with, I'll explain the symptoms because you might be dealing with the same thing. Maybe it could help you out a little bit. But basically, this thing will fire right up in the morning. We let it idle. Uh, runs great. Um, she's She idles great and everything, and then it'll just shut off. Just like that. No no chugging, no bogging. It just shuts off. And then when you go to fire it back up, uh, it just doesn't it just doesn't crank. I mean it cranks over, but it just it won't fire. So that's kind of what we're dealing with. And and after we let it sit five minutes, sometimes forty minutes, sometimes an hour, um, she'll fire right back up, run for a little bit, and it does the same thing. So what we did today, we picked ourselves up an OBD1 scanner. Um, this is for a uh, um, 1981 to 1995 um, and this trucks a 96 but for some reason it works on here um, so it threw us a couple codes um, we'll see if we can kind of read these codes to you here if you look on there it's gonna be code oh it's backwards but it was a code 211 which was profile ignition pickup um, circuit fault which is PIP which is inside the distributor and then the other code we got was loss of ignition diagnostic monitor signal spout slash uh, circuit grounded and that was a code 212 um, so basically we're not getting spark obviously um, I had checked that as well um, so we're going to go ahead and replace the whole distributor today I'm almost certain that it's going to be the issue doing some research weird thing is I haven't seen many videos on people replacing these distributors so I think it'd be a good thing to get out there again I don't know everything about uh, vehicle repairs this is the first time me doing this on this vehicle but I'm going to take you guys along with throughout the process and kind of give you a few pointers throughout it and uh, we'll kind of see where we end up. So first thing we're going to do is remove the old one and uh, get to putting the new one back in and then we're going to try to fire up and uh, see if we fix the issue. So uh, stay tuned. All right, so here's our existing distributor here. Uh, first thing we're going to do is just pop off this cap, um, get that out of the way. Um, you don't really need to take this off for the removal of this. But what we're going to do is we're probably going to pull this cap off here um, and then just connect it likewise. That way we keep our, our fire, firing order correct because we really don't want to mix that up. So um, that's what we're going to do. And then we'll continue to pull that bolt down there. I believe that's the only bolt that um, you need to pull out just, just to get it off, which seems very simple. But we're going to see how she goes. We're going to get these in the right firing order. And then we'll put the new one in. We'll set the timing and see how she runs, so stay tuned. So we're just gonna make sure all these coils are in the right place. I'm just gonna match these up um, and essentially pull one off and put one on, um, you know, and just kind of go through them until I got them all in the right spot. So we'll probably start off with our ignition wire here. That's the one that goes to the ignition coil. We'll get this here. All right, so we got all the wires plugged into the new new rotor cap here. So we're just going to push that off to the side to get it out of the way. Um, and, of course, we're going to check our firing order afterwards just to make sure everything's how it should be because um, that's extremely important to make sure the firing order is um, how it needs to be. So we'll go from there. All right, so we got our pigtail here, and all we're going to do is simply just pull it off just like that. And... That looks just like the one we bought, so that's good. Um, then we're gonna proceed to pull that bolt out. All right, so we only got one bolt from what it looks like to pull this out. Um, it looks like it's gonna be a little tricky though, of course, uh, one bolt would be way too easy. Um, <clears throat> so we got this right here. It's just a little angle socket. I mean, you could do this with a knuckle extension, um, whatever have you, but we're gonna try it with this. Um, and that's gonna be a half inch is the size. Um, so we're going to try just to bust that off right here. So, Wow, that came off very easily. That was like half a turn. Let's see if we can... Oh, yep, now the distributor's spinning. That's what's going to happen when we're timing it. We're going to be turning that distributor. So it's definitely intricate work. It's kind of working that bolt out of there. Alrighty. 
So that's the piece that holds it in, just one bolt there. We're gonna put that in a safe place. All right, so we got that bolt out and this should just pull right up, just like that. And then here we have our old distributor. Pretty sick. All right, so we got that old distributor out now. Um, looking down in there, it's definitely, uh, definitely pretty dirty. Give you a good look at it there. So if you look down there, kind of to your left, you'll see that's where that gear on the distributor meets, um, you know, to distribute the timing. And then all this is just kind of pretty gunked up, so it's kind of, kind of hard to see what's going on there. But we're going to try to clean it out a little bit before we put the new one in, just to make sure everything's safe and sound. And then we'll throw that new one in um, and just kind of go from there, set the timing, and see how she goes. All right, we got the new distributor here. We're just gonna pop her right down there, nice and gentle-like. We got that seal and whatnot kind of lubed up. You feel that kind of pop down. I have to... Oh, there we go. All right, so something we noticed here, so you got that little hex head at the end of the, the shaft on the distributor here. If you look very, very low down to the bottom there, you can see that there's that little thing with a nipple and you can see that there's a little hex head um, and that has to fit directly uh, into there. Um, we've tried to put it in once and it was kind of difficult. So we're gonna see what we can do to figure that out. We're just gonna mess around with it, probably spin it until we can lock it into place and then let you know how um, we got there. So, all right, so basically what we did here, um, this center shaft is, is that piece that had that little hex head that I needed to slide into and then this spins um, the outside. Um, so what I did is I kind of kept on lifting it up and I would go one gear tooth this way, drop it down one gear tooth until I could see that this down here, that little seal, little um, neoprene ring or whatever it is, we just pushed it down until that seal was clear and it went down a little bit further. So now we'll be able to get that bolt in there and then we know that it's sealed um, and properly in place. So we'll show you that. So we've got our little clip piece of that bolt. We're just going to simply go down here. You can see that right there. Keep that nice and hand tight. Um, and then we won't completely tighten this down uh, until, you know, we get the timing where it needs to be. But for now, we're just going to give her a few, a few ugga tuggas with the old handheld here just to kind of pull that distributor down a little more. All right, so here we got, uh, uh, we got that bolt down in there, nice and snug, but not too tight. That way this can still move around like this um, without kind of wiggling loose or whatever, because that's how we're going to adjust our timing. So we're going to put this cap back on here, a little simple. Um, there's a little divot right here. Um, there'll be a corresponding female divot right here on the top of the cap. So you just want to make sure that's straight. Um, when we first started, we had it twisted around. So I just kind of had to twist this and pull one of these off and put it back on as we went. Um, that way I didn't lose my firing order, um, but we're okay now. So we're just gonna pop that in there properly. We got a little clip here. Should help us hold it down. And then there should be one more in the back. That's clipped. So, so far this should be pretty good. Now that we got that cap on, real simply, we just gotta plug this in. Same thing that we disconnected earlier. And now it should fire up. Um, it's probably gonna run um, maybe too high, too low, I'm not sure. Um, the timing is obviously pretty messed up right now, um, but we got the timing gun that we're going to whip out and we're going to kind of just give you a little overview, show you um, how that works and what it should look like. So, Alrighty, so we got our timing gun here. Um, I believe you can pick these up from almost every auto parts store that may offer, um, you know, it for rent too. I know some places allow you to do that. Nevertheless, I had a buddy that had one. Um, and so what you're going to look at in here is there's literally, um, you got your positive and your negative terminals here that are going to connect to the, to the battery. Um, and then we got, this is how it tells the timing. All right, guys, we had a little issue with the timing gun here. It wasn't working. Um, this is something I did not want to do and it's something you shouldn't do, but I ended up just timing it 
um, just by ear, just listening to it. Um, so I played around with it a little bit until I could really find the right spot. Um, if you twist it this way, it's going to idle lower. I believe they call that detard. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and then if you go this way, I believe it's more advanced. Um, that's just what I noticed when I went this way. It sounded more like a tractor in this way. It started to rev up more before it would cut out, right? So I kind of met somewhere in the middle to where it sounded like how it was before. Um, we got that bolt nice and tight. It was a very intricate process. Um, for now, it's going to have to do until I get appropriate timing gun. Um, and for some reason, I couldn't see the notch marks on that uh, flywheel down there. So um, we're going to take her for a drive here and see how she runs. I'll give you a little video of the idle um, to kind of show you how it sounds right now. Um, but for now, we got a truck that runs. Um, we're going to hope that this fixes the, the issue that we've been dealing with as well um, with that PIP. Um, we'll probably scan it as well to make sure those codes are gone. So um, we'll go from there. All right, we're going to fire her up now just to see how she sounds. We had her, had her running a little bit there when we are trying to time it. guys did a last few adjustments on here on the 460 um, again we didn't have the timing light um, so kind of just took her for a drive and eventually did it until she fell back to normal so we're going to take her for one last drive to make sure she's good to go um, other than that she feels pretty good a lot better than she did before Looks like that fixed our. Uh, looks like that fixed our original issue. Um, so that's exciting. Thanks for tuning in. Give her a like, subscribe, 